Are you ready for the Word of God? Yeah. Open up your Bibles. Yeah. Go with me to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And this morning, I want to I speak about releasing your faith. Every time we, we, uh, we talk and we, we minister in the area of offerings and tithes, I want to let you know that it's not about the offering and the tithe. It's about faith. Amen. It's all about faith. And God challenges us in the area of finances because if we are challenged in the area of finance and we grow our faith in that area, we could use that same faith that we have been built up in the area of finance as God is our provider in the area of our healing for our marriage, healing for our body, restoration of our city and our nation. Anything is possible with God, but you have to build up your faith. Amen. And so today I want to teach you how to release your faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And John... John chapter 12, let's go and begin in verse 24. Put it on the screens, please. John 12, verse 24. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, praise God. They'll get it. Praise the Lord. Let me just go and read it. John chapter 12, verse 24. There we go. Most surely I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Everybody say much grain. much grain. Verse 25. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Now, how many of you are servants of God? And so you're here because Jesus is here. Jesus said, wherever I am, my servants will be as well. And so you are here because Jesus is here. Now, the Bible talks to us about seed. And he says that the seed must die. The seed must die. There are a lot of people that do not allow the seed to die. They, even though they might release the seed, they might give the seed, but they still hold on to the seed in their heart. When you sow, you have to release the seed. You cannot hold on to that seed. You cannot, you know, you cannot be looking at the place that you sowed and be judging the way they're using the seed. If you bless somebody, let them enjoy the blessing. Amen? Amen? And, and, and when you bless someone, that is a seed because you gave it to them in the name of the Lord. You did it because God spoke to you and God directed you and God put it in your heart to give. You want it to be a blessing. Amen. I'm talking about an offering, a seed. Tithe belongs to God. So there ain't, don't ever give tithe and think I sowed a seed. That's not seed. That's, that is God's money. That's God's property. Amen. And that's God's portion. That's because you have dedicated your life to God. But when it comes to offerings, it's above and beyond your, your, your tithe. When you give, you have to release the seed. Everybody say, release the seed. And so don't hold on to it in your heart. It has to fall to the ground, and it has to die. Because the Word of God says that after it falls to the ground and dies, then it will begin to grow, and it will produce a multitude of harvests. Amen? Now, how many want a great harvest? then you have to allow the seed to die. Amen? Sowing is an act of faith. The seed must be fully released into the hands of God. When God tells you to do it, do it. When God tells you to give it, give it. When God tells you to say it, say it. Just go forth and be obedient to the voice of God because it's a seed. You're sowing a seed into the hands of God. But, but don't give and then keep on looking at it and say, well, I wonder what they're going to do. I wonder if they're going to use, I wonder if they deserve to receive the seed that I have. My question to you is, were you led by man or were you led by God? Was it the need that caused you to give? Was it, was, or was it the voice of the Holy Spirit that told you to give? Amen. Because you have to understand, first of all, the Bible says that he gives seed to the sower. And so if you are a, a sower, someone that God can use, he'll put in your hand the seed. But then he will tell you how to give, when to give, if you open up your heart and say, Holy Spirit, speak to me about my giving, because there are desires that you have, there are needs that you want to be met, and so what is God's solution to the desires of your heart? 
and the needs that you, you desire to, to have them fulfilled. He empowers you with a seed. I used to cry and I'd be like thinking, man, well, how am I going to get the needs to take care of the ministry and all this stuff? It just seemed like, like I can never do anything. I can never get beyond a certain point. It always, there's always a lack. And so I remember, you know, and, you know, from this great ministry of reaching the nations with television, and then there was not enough to, to take care of even putting the lights on. And so we couldn't, we couldn't preach the gospel on television. We, we shut those things down. We shut things down. And I just began to just pastor and preach and minister and pray. And God told me, just love my people, and that's what I did. But one day, God woke me up early in the morning. I used to wake up early in the morning and just write these little devotionals. And then I would email them to as many people as I could. And that became my ministry because I couldn't preach on TV. And I, I'm one of those people that I need to preach. I mean, I, I mean, I got, God gives me so much to give. I don't want to waste it. And the more I give, the more I receive, the, the revelation. And so I woke up one morning. I wrote the devotion. In the middle of writing the devotion, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me. And he told me this. He said, my people are living in the desert. That's what he told me. My people are living in the desert. And then he showed me that my, our, my prayers were wrong and my position was wrong. I kept on acting like I was in the desert. Remember when the Hebrew people were traveling, they were supposed to be in the promised land, but they ended up going into the desert and having to die out there because they didn't believe God for the promised land. And they, 40, 40 years they were in the desert. And, but in the desert, God fed them. God protected them. They had, a, they had a pillar of fire at night that warmed them. They had a cloud covering during the day. And there was manna on the ground in the morning. There was birds that would fly down low when they wanted meat. There was a rock that poured out water for them when they were thirsty. Their clothes did not wear out. Their feet were not sore. That was all God in his mercy. And God said, my people keep on living in the desert. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? But that's not my best. That's right. He said, my best is the promised land. Yeah. And I saw it. And I, I, I don't know if you are guilty of this, but I'm going to confess to you. I, am guilty. I was guilty of this. I was asking God, God, give me enough to pay my car payment, my mortgage payment. My, my, my phone bill, my credit payment. I was asking God for him just to give me enough to get from one day to the next day to the next day. And I want to let you know, God has been faithful to get me from one day to the next day to the next day. But that's not God's best. He said, my best is my promised land that is commanded to grow whatever seed you put in it. So it's no longer just God sustaining you, keeping you alive, but it's God allowing you to be blessed according to your faith. According to your faith, the limits of what you can receive are endless according to your faith. The only limit that is placed upon what you can receive from God is you. Because the ground will produce for you. Because it's blessed by God. He says, whatever you sow, it will reap for you. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I want God's best. I don't want to get to heaven. And, you know, I'll get to heaven. I'll thank God. Oh, thank you, Lord, for feeding me from a rock when God had a river waiting for me to drink from. I don't want to get to heaven and say, oh, Lord, thank you for not allowing my clothes to, to, to wear out, you know. When God says, listen, I'm going to give you so much, you could just buy whatever you want to wear. You don't have to wear the same old thing yesterday that you wore yesterday. Amen. 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 How many you want God's best? Yes. It starts with seed. You have to release the seed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Faith releases it with expectation that it will come back multiplied. See, you have to understand that when you give your offerings, it's opportunity. It's an investment opportunity. 
You have an investment opportunity. I get to be blessed. I get to increase today because God put a seed in my hand. So I'm going to the, I'm going to the field. I'm going to sow that seed, amen? And as I sow that seed, I have great expectation that it's coming back to me multiplied, amen? God doesn't add. He multiplies, amen? Hallelujah. And, and the reason why people don't receive is because they don't believe it. So they, they, they sow or they're supposed to be sowing, but then after they put it at the altar into the hands of God, they walk back and they go home and they're still thinking, man, I could have bought that if I didn't give that to God. I could have done this if I didn't give that to God. When you don't realize that there was a seed that was getting ready to produce, but everything is connected to the heart. Everything's connected. Faith works through love. If there's no love, there's no faith. And so you got to release it. I don't want to know anything about it. It doesn't belong to me. It's your business. I put it in the hands of God. Don't. I, can't, I cannot destroy my seed by thinking about it all the time. I got to let it grow. I didn't give it to man. I gave it to God. But pastor, what if I gave it, I, I believe that God told me to give something and, and I gave it to, to, to my cousin in the name of the Lord and then he ends up abusing it. That's not your problem. That's their problem. God will reward you according to your heart. If you gave it to God, he is in charge of blessing it. I've shared this testimony, this story about when I was a kid. And I know most of you know it. How many of y'all... Ever heard the testimony of the mango seed? Good, you get to hear it again. <laughs> My dad was wonderful at eating. He was a professional eater. How many of you are really good at eating? Like, you, you got that skill down packed. And, and my father was so good at eating that whatever he ate, he made you want to eat it too. He didn't just eat, he slurped. He had the sound effects. He had the, I mean, and he would look at you in the eye while he was eating and show you all the joy that he was going through. Where you're looking at the food that he's eating and you're thinking, I want that too. I'm a little kid. I must have been about 10 years old, 9 years old. And my dad had an ice cold mango because he liked them cold. And it was so soft and, and ripe. And he began to eat it in front of me. And he's a... <laughs> and he didn't just eat it. I mean, he, he did the whole head movement. <laughs> and looked at me and he's... And, and the worst was the seed, because he would go to town with that seed. <laughs> I mean, he'd be... And I'm there like, oh, I want that. <laughs> and he gave me a piece, and I devoured that thing. And he looked at me and says, Kevin, take this seed. Go outside. Dig a hole and plant it. And all I was thinking, I want those mangoes. I went outside. I had never planted a single thing in my life. I just knew that I needed to put it under dirt and put some water on it, so that's what I did. I dug a little hole. I put the mango seed in there. I covered it with dirt. I put some water in there. I went inside. The next day, I was ready for a mango tree. I was ready to eat. I had visions of my father eating the mango from the day before. So I had vision that I was going to eat all the mangoes that I wanted because I planted a seed. You know, there's a saying, you can count how many, how many seeds that are in a, a mango, but you can't count how many mangoes that are in a seed, right? And so I planted a seed. I'm expecting a tree. I go out there and I look at it and there it was, nothing. 
But you know, I'm a patient young man. I figured it takes time for this seed to grow a tree. So I gave it two more days. <laughs> and I went out there, and I looked at it, and after about three or four days, no tree. I thought, oh my, there's something wrong. Maybe, the, maybe, maybe there's something wrong with the seed. Did it grow? I don't know. So I got my, my shovel, and I dug and I found the seed still there. <laughs> Gave up on all that. But see, that's the way a lot of us are. We, we, we're not patient to let God bless it. Let God grow it. It will grow. Amen. Tell your neighbor, it will grow. So you have to understand, God's word is already established. Jesus Christ came, died on the cross, rose from the dead to forever establish the word of God. The only thing that lacks and the only thing that causes the word of God not to be worked or to perform for you is your faith. Your faith empowers the word to perform for your life. And so when you sow, you sow the seed, you release it, and thank God that he's the one that's going to bring it back to you multiplied. Amen. What does the scripture say? In Ecclesiastes 11 verse 1, it says, cast your bread upon the waters for you will find it after many days. The Bible talks about that we have to always be giving, always releasing. If, you know, we don't know what seed's going to spring up and what, what, what time that, that harvest is coming in. So if you, how many want a constant harvest on your life? Then you have to have a constant giving and sowing a seed. Amen. Sowing a seed is not a one-time thing. If you want constant harvest, there's seed, time, and harvest. The Bible says as long as the earth exists, there's seed, time, and harvest. So if you are constantly sowing, you will be constantly receiving. And it's not because you were good or because you deserved it. It's because you had faith in the power of God. You sowed the seed in faith. Amen. Amen. And so you have to sow all the time. When you wake up in the morning, you sow. And, and, and every time you sow, you have to release it. There are people that are carrying things upon their life that you're supposed to be giving to God. There are burdens and worries and stresses that don't belong to you. You have to cast your cares upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you went before God and you cast your care upon the Lord Jesus Christ for your marriage, stop complaining that nothing's happening. You put it in the right hand. Whose hand did you put it in? If you put it in Jesus' hand, just begin to believe that it's working, that God is working. And he's going to bring back the multitude in Jesus' name to you. Amen. Hallelujah. A seed will meet every need. Amen. We build our faith using money. We build our faith using money. And the reason why it's so good to build your faith using money, the Bible says everyone's given a measure of faith. But faith is like a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it gets. Amen. If someone says, well, my, my, my faith is weak, I'm going to ask them, are you using it? I've challenged you that this year, every day, you should be asking God for something new. Whether, whether, you, whether it's just a desire for the moment or something for the long term, but every day you should be asking God for something new. Because the more that you ask, the more that you receive. The more that you sow, the more that you'll, you'll, you'll reap, amen? And so it always puts God, the one, he's the one that blesses me. He's the one that provides me. He's the one that answers my prayers. But you have not because you ask not. No seed, no harvest. Tell your neighbor, no seed, no harvest. And it's better to build up your faith using money than building up your faith when you're sick. When, when a person who, who, who has never built up their faith and then they call in for the, the pastor, you know, I have to build their faith up. I have to work, I have to re-preach all the years. And you know, the ones that, that, that are in church that don't give, those are the ones that I have to preach the hardest to in their time of need. I love them. I'm going to be with them. Where, where, where whatever they go through, we're going to love them through it. Amen. 
They're going to have to lean on our faith. But it's better if you would just build up your faith because when I get there or a minister gets there, you just have someone to come in agreement with you and your faith. It's better that you could say, Pastor, come into agreement. I believe in the name of Jesus that that sickness is going to leave my body and that this medicine is going to work what it's supposed to do and then I'm going to be out of the hospital by tomorrow in Jesus' name. Man, it's so easy to preach to that person. So easy to pray for that person. We end up having Holy Ghost time. Amen. But, but you know, I, I says there's, there's no excuse for laziness. There's no excuse for laziness. If you can't study the word of God on your own, then why makes you think that you could receive from God? If you, because apparently you don't believe that God could do anything for you. So that's why it, it means nothing to you. I encourage every one of you to get in Bible school. What pastor, I just got saved. Good, that's where you're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. And grow in the things of God. Amen. You're going to become great in Jesus' name. Amen. Say a seed, a seed. Will, meet every will meet every need. So God empowers you to receive by sowing a seed. Some of you are believing God for raises in your, in your workplace. Start sowing a seed towards that. Call that seed out. In the name of Jesus, this is for a raise in my, in my workplace in Jesus' name. Some of you are going to school and you're believing God for your, your, your school debts to be paid off. Start sowing seed in Jesus' name. What you could not do, God will do for you. But it's going to work through a seed, amen? Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Go and put it on the screen. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Hallelujah. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Next. And should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. Verse 28. For the earth yields crop by itself, first the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. Verse 29. But when the grain ripens, immediately puts in a sickle because the harvest has come. When you sow, the harvest will come. Amen. We don't know how it grows. Listen, sowing seed is your responsibility. Yes. Growing the seed is God's responsibility. Yes. If you do your part, he will do his. Yes. But you have to release the seed. Amen. You can't be holding it on your heart. You can't be saying, well, maybe that seed didn't work. Maybe and, and be like me digging holes where you should have just left it there just leave it there and thank god that it's sown once it's sown now it's god's responsibility not mine i'm just expecting to receive in jesus name amen let me, let me share one last testimony I, I was reminded about this this past week my father when he uh, when he was growing in the things of god he wanted to hear the word over and over and over but there, he didn't have a tape player and back then the, the tape players cost a lot of money so he didn't eat for several weeks, his lunch, and he just saved up money so that he could buy himself an audio cassette tape player. He was a cookie salesman, so he'd drive from store to store, and he'd press play and listen to the word as he was, as he was going, because he, he, he wanted to grow in the things of God. And so he saved up the money, bought the tape player, and as he was driving to one of the stores, listening to the word, he went in there, made the sales, came back, and someone broke into the car and stole his tape player. He got angry. God, somebody stole my tape player. I saved up money to buy this thing, and now somebody stole. I missed so many lunches to buy this thing. I worked so hard to get this thing. I wanted to hear your word. I wanted to grow in the things of God, and somebody stole my tape player. And God told him, he said, give it to me. I said, what? My dad said, what? Give it to me. So right then and there, my father said, okay, Lord, I release it to you. I give it to you. How many of you know that became a seed? Amen. The next day, he gets in the car. He starts driving to the first business, and he leans over to press play on the tape player, and he gets angry because it's not there. God, my tape player. Somebody stole my tape player. Somebody broke into my car. I didn't eat a couple of weeks of lunch just to save up money for this. Thing. I wanted to hear the word of God. God said, what tape player? You know, the tape player that I had, God said, I thought you gave it to me. He says, yes, Lord, I gave it to you. And my father just kept on giving it to God. Every time the, the, the temptation to take it back, he kept on giving it back to God. Well, after a little while, 
this man shows up at our house and he says, sir, I have a truckload full of tape players that God told me to bless you with. <laughs> My father began to preach the gospel and he would record his preachings on tapes and he would sell the tapes for like one or two dollars a piece. But nobody had tape players because they would cost three, four hundred dollars and nobody could afford it. So my dad would sell the tape for like one or two dollars and then he would give him a tape player to listen to it. God has a bigger plan than just what you can think of. He wants to use that seed to be a blessing to many people. But you have to release the seed. This morning as we honor God, I want, to, I want you to remember that a seed will meet every need. Focus on sowing the seed and watch what God will do for your life. Amen.